Are you looking to be a home buyer in 2022? Hi, my name's Erica Hagfors, and here are five things to consider when writing an offer on a home in a strong seller's market. Number one, list price is a starting point. If you are looking at homes fresh on market and there's a lot of interest, maybe an offer deadline has been set, that price is only going to go up. Uh, with multiple offers, buyers are trying to be as appealing to the seller as possible, meaning that you're going to offer over that list price, uh, sometimes by as much as fifty dollars to $100,000, depending on the home, location, condition, upgrades, all of that. So if you want to be smart and be competitive, drop the price band that you're looking at by twenty-five dollars to $50,000 and look at those homes so that you can be competitive price point wise when making an offer. Number two, be prepared to ask for little to no repairs. I know it sounds scary and this is where viewing the home and really looking at the home when you get to see it is going to be important. Have questions asked, you know, have your agent asking the condition of the roof, the furnace, all the systems of the home, look at the history of the home, to see what updates have been done and how it's been maintained. Check county records for any permits that have been pulled so that you have a really good idea of what that home's condition could be like. Things will always pop up and those can always be points of discussion, but it is very important to sellers right now that they're not nickel and dimed when they get these above asking offers. And unfortunate as it may be, that is what our market is right now. So. Be prepared to either say you're ask, you're taking the home as is, no repairs, or that you will not ask for repairs under a certain dollar amount um, and, and have that dollar amount kind of set in your head. Number three, be prepared to <laughs> waive your appraisal or include some appraisal gap coverage. And what that means is if you are getting financing for this property, the bank is gonna do an appraisal and they will lend to you based on that appraisal. When you go above the list price, sometimes there can be discrepancies in the appraisals and they can come in under what you're offering. This is where the seller again wants to know that there's some security and that you're ready to put your mouth where, your money where your mouth is. And if you've offered $50,000 over asking, they want to know that that $50,000 is going to come to them. Um, it's part of why they're accepting your offer and they don't want it to be a negotiating point once they're under contract and maybe have turned down some other offers. So you can either include some gap coverage saying that you'll cover an appraisal that's maybe $10,000 low, $20,000 low, whatever works in your budget. Or if you're a strong enough buyer or you're comfortable enough and you've got the reserve funds, you can just wave that and say that you're willing to move forward, even if the appraisal comes in low. Um, so things to think about. Number four is rent back. Rent back is a big one, especially in the strong sellers market where it's very hard to get a contingent offer accepted. We see a lot of times that if it's an occupied home that you're riding on, they're gonna need some possession after the close of your escrow. And sometimes that's done at your cost, whatever you'll be paying in your mortgage. Sometimes it's done at a reduced rate. Obviously the sellers like it if it can be done for free, but that's something to have a conversation with. Every property is gonna be a little bit different situation. Um, but generally if it's an occupied home, you are seeing rent back being offered to the seller just in case so they don't have to move twice. And the last but not the least is lender. Now, in a strong seller's market, every term is important and your lender can be the make or break situation. So when I'm choosing lenders to work with and recommend to my buyers, the most important things are that they are competitive, that they have great communication and that they can get the job done on time, if not early. And that's how I know that I can sell my, my buyer to the seller every single time. I've had to be making the difference um, and getting offers accepted. So <laughs> listen to your agent. When it's time to choose a lender, if you are coming in unapproved, make sure you take their recommendation and see if they can be as competitive. The big banks just can't operate in a timely manner. And if you have a vacant property and they want a three week close, a lot of times the big banks just can't do it. And that could mean the difference between getting your offer accepted 
and having to write more offers on different properties. So these are five things that are very important. There are other things to consider, obviously, but take them to heart, think about them. It is a tough market out there, um, but with the right agent, right lender, right team, you can get that done. Cheers.